How's it going? I'm playing Super Mario Party here, just came out from Nintendo Switch, and I wanted to make a video about it. I'm going to make a video about the fourth bonus map in the game, Kamex Tantalizing Tower. You get about playing the other three maps first, and this map's, I think, a little more unique than the other ones. Instead of Toadette moving back and forth, dropping out the star wherever she goes, she stays in one spot at the very end of the map, forcing you to follow the lone path a few forks in the road to get to the end. She also can sell you two stars, the value of the stars varies constantly. And the value of the blue and red spaces is 6 coins and ups to 10 for the final 3 turns. Not sure why I changed for this map, but it did. Let's start making some progress down the map. You ready to go, Waluigi? Alright, what's your roll? Okay, he's not ready to go. One of the gimmicks to this map is if you hit the special event space, uh, they can take you, the little Kamikoons, and just drop you wherever. There's one spot where they'll take you to a secret path on the side. That's actually where you can run into to and possibly steal a star. There's also a fork when you get near the end where you can either go past a thwomp or chain chop. I chose to go by chain chop and he decided to smash me into a wall. It was a textbook check come hockey standards, but boy Wario, he needed a few band-aids after that one. CSS mentioned when you get to the end, you will have an opportunity to buy two stars. The value of the stars are either going to be 5, 10, or 15 per star. After purchasing a star or landing on a special event space right in front of the star, the value will change to whatever happens. Big thing to note too, neither of the stores in this map actually has the golden pipe. One of the most broken things on the end map does not exist here. Even the store that forced you to buy an item did not have a golden pipe. That's one of the biggest reasons why this is my favorite map. I have absolutely no idea why Luigi looks like he's about to shit his pants when he sees Kamek. Kamek is not that scary of a person. I know Luigi had like all his paranoid adventures in Luigi's Mansion, and I'm pretty sure he actually died in one of the Smash trailers, so I'm not really sure what he's doing here alive at the moment. But I'm not sure why he's that paranoid. Kamek is not that evil. Another huge tactic for Super Mario Party. One, get a bunch of golden pipes, doesn't buy this map. But two, when you do a versus mini game that's really short, make sure you win it. Getting a ton of coins and having your opponents lose that many coins can really be a game changer. I win it here. Really got me up to the right foot this map. Made it a lot easier to beat the very hard difficulty. Kinda sucks here for my boy Luigi. After getting off the bad luck space, he does not get to the star, but instead triggers the event where the star changes value. The value went from 5 to 15 coins, tripling how much you'd have to spend. Very bad turn. Doesn't really matter, he had zero coins because he sucks ass. But still, very bad turn by him. Now I'm still not sure what which character is the best dice at this point, but I do love Wario's. You have a two-thirds chance of getting a guaranteed six. The fact that you can do that and really zoom around the map, I find very beneficial. I, I, Warriors might be my favorite dice at this moment. Leave it to Mario Party to turn the game of tennis into something where a dinosaur is blasting bombs into his three competitors who were stuck on the tennis net. Unfortunately, we didn't win this game because it was very, very, very one-sided. Now, I've never gotten a blowjob before with a girl butting my dick off. I actually never had a blowjob before in my life either. But I know the equivalent. It's when you have enough coins to get the star, but land on that special space only to raise the price up to 15 coins. You're stuck at 13 coins. You can no longer afford the star, Yoshi. You gotta feel for a dinosaur friend here. Another huge tactic in this game is to try to rack up as many allies as possible. Not only can they actually help you in some mini games, but the fact that you can get that extra one or two dice spaces every ally you have can make going on the map so much faster, especially this one where you gotta race to the end constantly. Trying to get allies, even targeting get on the ally space if it requires just a smaller roll, makes a lot of sense. Get the allies in this game, they are very helpful. I feel bad for Wallogy. Not the fact that he still hasn't been included in Smash yet, but the fact that he was on a bad luck space, happened to roll a minus three, which means him lose three coins, and return right back to the bad luck space. Gotta feel for this guy, gotta feel for this guy. Another good tip is make sure your Joy-Cons are always charged when you're doing minigames. You need to be very precise with all the rumble features they have, or just play and move it around. As you see here, Wario starts trying to vacuum the wall, being the world's shittiest maid. I'll be honest, if my Joy-Con was still good, Wario would probably still be the shittiest maid in the world. Another thing I want to point out, there is the custom dice block in this game. Uh, I learned this by mistake, and you'll see right here. The allies will not roll the dice whenever you do this. So, I thought for sure I was going to do, like, if I pick a 2, it'd be plus plus. It'd be a 3 or 4 plus Peach's roll. No, whatever you pick is what you get. Use that wise when doing the math, and don't be like me and end up on a right space. I got two stars out of it, but I ended up on a right space. There's a plan people do in Mario Kart sometimes, is where they don't go at the beginning, just so they can be in 12th and get the best item. That actually applies to this fucking map too. I think the only way to get a golden pipe is if you're in last place, which Luigi did right here. They also allow you to buy three stars in the final three turns as well. So fucking Luigi, warps to the star, gets three stars. I think he had zero at this point in this game. Oh, that's all I had too. 
But still, I mean, he basically gets freebie stars because he was god awful this game. Honestly, it might not be a bad tactic to do horrendous in this map up until the last three turns. I absolutely love how the allies join yourself for some minigames, but in this one where you gotta make sure that people don't pop your balloon, I just let Peach do a thing. I just ran like hell and let Peach be like my minion to try to pop everyone's balloons. Worked out like a charm too, see they're all gonna gang up on Luigi, and what do you know, I just ran to the bottom, I did absolutely nothing. I have a minion Peach. That's right, Wario owns Peach now. It's like, the lone problem is sometimes when your minion decides to absolutely do shit, and then launch off the map because you're an idiot. Fortunately I win the game because everyone else sucked more, or they gotta take care of Yoshi first. That's why I had Luigi's minions at. Uh, Oh shit. The means actually have a chance to win the game for you. Yep. Yeah. Luigi's minions were pretty good. They're allies, not minions. Fuck it. No, 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 no. They're minions. They're underlings, that's what they are. Alright, I have no fucking idea how this worked. But we got nine hidden blocks in this 15 turn game. Fucking insane. You might be asking yourself, what are the odds of that? Let's see if I actually calculate this right. So let's assume their hidden block can be in one of the N27 spaces. I think it's only blue spaces, but let's just assume at random you land in a space. So there's a 1 in 27 chance of getting a hidden block. Amount of blocks in this map. Uh, you gotta use combination because you don't give a shit about the order. Doing so, you follow this formula that I put on the screen. Hopefully it's the right formula. And you come out with a 0.02% chance of getting that many hidden blocks in a single game. No clue if math is right or not, but whatever. One last thing to note for all my text in this video. This one's just do the math. Figure out what dice block you have, figure out what spaces you can roll. Obviously try to rack up the mushrooms so you can get the three or five spaces. Have your allies try to get a bonus one or two. Do the math, figure out how far you can go, try to target which spaces you go to. In doing so, especially for this map where you have to go around it numerous times, you can easily win. Y just do the numbers game. I was able to go, what? I think it's uh, eight spaces here, even with a poison mushroom on me which is just enough to get three more stars and basically see my victory. Do the math, know the board. That's honestly one of the best tags you can do in Mario Party right there. I include this clip just because I like to see Wall Luigi die. Very satisfying. Very satisfying. If all the tips I just suggested right here or just fucking play the game and pray for the best, it's Mario Party. The luck is way too involved in this game. In doing so, you have a good chance to win. I don't know what all the bonus stars are. I just Google them and just listed it here so read all the bonus stars you can possibly win. I happened to get both them this game which got my total up to 11 stars and I absolutely crushed the competition. Very hard difficulty by the way. And there you have it. That is that is Kamek's tantalizing tower. There are some tips and tricks on how to beat it. And apparently I decided I got a gem of tenacity out of it. I don't know what the fuck a gem of tenacity is but I got it. Yeah. I, I, honestly, what the fuck is this? I, I, I just want to play Mario Party. I don't want fucking gems. I want to play Mario Party. I want to get my ass kicked in Mario Party by pure bad luck.